Recently on PM and IPM, we heard from one family about how heroin affected their lives. We heard from the mother about the day their daughter appeared in court in an effort to sort herself out and get off heroin. You pass from pillar to post. We walked out of the court at half past two, three o'clock, and I said to the sister, when does this start? And he said, now. I said, well, what about our daughter's drug use? You know, she can't just suddenly stop here now. What's going to happen? She's going to immediately fail. The lure and the desire and the desperation to get drugs is so huge. I said, she, I won't be able to keep her at home. And he said, well, go to the GP. So we went to the GP and the GP said, we no longer prescribe methadone. You'll need to go to Turning Point. And they said, oh, sorry, we're not an emergency service. She won't actually die from this withdrawal. I was just shocked at how nobody was taking responsibility. You can live with someone who's withdrawing from a hundred pound a day habit, who's going to be kicking off and screaming and crying and vomiting and probably smashing stuff within a few hours. A&E don't provide methadone. You're, you're absolutely stuck. And that's how we ended up in the middle of a local town with me handing over my hard earned money to buy drugs. I had to essentially break the law or be part of breaking the law in a roundabout way in order to survive those first couple of days. And that's wrong. Methadone is a medication. It's not a drug that people use to get high. It's not fun. It's not anything. It's just a medication to stop you feeling ill when you're coming off heroin. But it's very hard to access. That was the mother's experience. And we also heard from her daughter. Well, we spoke to the probation beforehand and they said, like, how, would we be how could we best help you? And I said, well, as, as an addict recovering, I wouldn't have offended if I wasn't an addict. You know, I don't need hundreds of pounds every day to survive. <laughs> what I need is a prescription and eventually to come off of. And so help coming off drugs is the best help that they could have got given me. And said to mum about a tag to keep me in. They're like safety nets at the moment, so I'm getting tested twice a week. So although it's my mum and dad took me to court, it's only good has come of it. If I'd have gone to prison, it would have been a completely different story. Now you can hear all of those conversations on the IPM podcast and someone who heard that interview with the daughter was our reporter Hugh Sykes. I remember Hugh, I left the studio and you leapt out of the chair and said, oh, that reminds me. Tell us what it reminded you of. Yes, I think I chased you out of the building until you turned and stopped and listened to me. <laughs> it reminded me of an assignment I was sent on by PM 20 years ago to Merseyside, where there was this extraordinary regime involving a local GP, which got over those four main problems facing the addict, the young woman who we just heard. And for the addicts in this place near Liverpool, no more massive cost of drugs, funded often by theft, no more dangerous needles with the associated HIV risk, hepatitis risk and all the rest of it, no more drug dealers in the neighbourhood, because if you prescribe heroin, and there's a clue to what we're about to hear, the drug dealers haven't got any customers anymore, and no more heroin addicts not knowing quite what the quality is of the heroin that they've had to buy on the streets because it's been provided for them by somebody who knows that it's pure. Well, thank goodness for your good memory. You recalled uh, making this report and you very kindly hunted through your archive. This, <laughs> this was on old fashioned quarter inch tape. It was. Archive is a wonderful word for my disorganized system of a wooden <laughs> box with lots of old quarter inch tapes in them. And luckily there was one in there marked heroin doctor. Okay, and you've now digitized it and we can have a listen to what was happening 20 years ago. This afternoon, the Chancellor and the Governor of the Bank of England hold one of their regular meetings to discuss interest rates. The lunchtime TV news in the living room of a two-bedroomed house in Cheshire, a very normal British home. Sofas, fitted carpets, books on the shelf and goldfish in a smart tank. The home is Marie's. She's making us tea and she's about to light up a cigarette. From a packet with a prescription label on the back, it reads 40 diamorphine 100 milligram reefers. Use 10 a day as directed. Diamorphine is heroin. Heroin on prescription from the doctor. Is it all right if I light this up now? Cheers. 
Well, it looks like an ordinary cigarette, except it's got a slight stain halfway yeah, down it. That's yeah. the heroin in the cigarette. Yes, the pharmacist injects it in, and you just leave them to dry. Maria used to live with her partner and their eight-year-old daughter. Now she's a single parent. Her partner is dead. He was a heroin addict too. He too used to get his drug from the doctor until it was decided that they should both transfer to a different clinic and to the heroin substitute, methadone. There were two days a week where we didn't have anything and we had to start going back down to Liverpool to score. And there, she said, they got badly adulterated heroin which gave him the septicemia which killed him. They'd never been in danger of that while they were getting their prescriptions. For four years we just went to the chemist twice a week to collect what we needed and it was clean stuff and that's all we took. I know for a fact if they just left us alone we would still be leading the life that we were before. We were really happy, we family. He earned money gardening. She was a supply teacher. She came home in time to bring her daughter back from school. Now she's terrified. She's been given four to six weeks' supply of heroin reefers in order to give her enough time to grieve. She then again faces reduction from heroin to methadone. She says the methadone doesn't work, makes her feel bad, and she's bound to go back to dealers for heroin again. Marie used to get her prescriptions from a psychiatrist in Widnes, Dr John Marks, until she and 95 other addicts were transferred and his clinic closed. I wondered if he thought that she might not perhaps be exaggerating the dangers she now faces, if her partner's death was possibly exceptional. I know that two young ladies have lost their legs, one leg each from injecting at street drugs that they've turned to when they can't get their legal source. And they were fine before. And they? they were fine before, perfectly healthy. And that's the essence of the treatment he offers. It's not the heroin that kills people, it's having to go to dealers for heroin which is seldom clean. Adulterated street drugs, whose strengths you're unaware of, can obviously poison you quite rapidly. And he says if a doctor prescribes heroin, you eliminate two poisons, the junk in the drug and the poison in the community, the pushers. When you give a ration of drugs to those who will use regardless, dealers go right out of business. In fact, uh, the dealers have a vested interest in maintaining prohibitionist policies. Cheshire police confirm that this method, which used to be national policy, works, emphasising that they're talking about determined addicts who will find heroin come what may. They say that crime by addicts was reduced by more than 90% under Dr Marx's regime, and the police are disappointed that local patients are no longer referred to Dr Marx. This is Detective Constable Mike Lofts at Cheshire Police Central Drugs Unit. At the same period last year, we had no deaths for addicts from the clinic, but this year we've had six who've died. And robbery and assault by addicts previously treated at the Witness Clinic is up 14%. The motive for committing the crime, once you were given free heroin, of course, has been removed. Once that um, privilege has been taken away, then they are obliged to return to more criminal activity in order to buy street drugs. Detective Constable Loft says that his drugs unit is just being realistic. Many addicts fail to transfer to methadone and then the craving does oblige them to get heroin from dealers. He also says there's a persuasive economic argument in favour of prescribing. If, for example, there were 50 such addicts who returned to their uh, criminal activity and each one was stealing in the region of £30,000 worth of goods a year, which is what the, is accepted as normal, then you're talking about an enormous rise in, in local crime in the witness area. Some of these addicts in danger now are very ordinary citizens, working and paying their taxes. Michael is an insurance clerk from Runcorn, just over the River Mersey. Like Marie, Michael leads a normal life, swimming, golf, a pint with his friends in the pub, and he lives with his mum. By using this, you can enjoy life the way everybody else does. And at the end of the day, diamorphine is only a painkiller. It's not a drug like LSD that makes you do exceptionally wild, crazy things. It is a painkiller. One thing that my mum's always said to me is that she's glad I am what I am and not an alcoholic, because if it had been an alcoholic, she said she'd have shown me the door a long time ago. You, what are your observations hearing that again? It, it brings it back vividly, and the, in particular the distress of this very well-intentioned doctor who hugely reduced the crime rate and hugely increased the quality of life of the addicts that he was helping. Unfortunately, there was at the time a major war on drugs in the United States, and 
I was told at the time, a lot of pressure from America to end this doctor's license from the Home Office. Previously, before 1960, the kind of thing that John Marks was doing on Merseyside was normal and widespread under what was known as the British system, prescribing drugs to addicts to get over all the problems that we've discussed. But again, at that time, Britain came under pressure from the United States to come into line with American drug prevention policy. Hugh Sykes and an IPM tomorrow at uh, 5.30 tea time here on Radio 4. Much more on drug policy and on the family we have been talking about. Now, Helen Willits is here with the weather forecast. Hi, Helen. Good evening, Eddie. Hello.